Hi, it's Pamela. In this tutorial, we're going to go over how to add external animations to Doodly. Doing so can bring your whiteboard videos to life and add a little visual interest. Hey, and welcome to the official Doodly YouTube channel. If you enjoy our content, please click the like and subscribe button below. Now let's get straight to the video. As you know, Doodly makes animated whiteboard videos. The main animated element is that drawing effect. Once the graphic is drawn though, it becomes static. It just stays there. Now what if you wanted an object to move after it's been drawn on the whiteboard? Say you have a gear and you want the little gears to turn, or a clock with time ticking by. Adding animations like this can add interest to your videos or draw attention to an object to reinforce your concept. Diddly supports adding animations, but you must first start with an image type that moves, which is known as a GIF file or GIF, depending on how you pronounce it. GIF stands for Graphics Interchange Format. You see them all over the internet. An early example is the classic Dancing Baby from the 90s, but they're often used today in memes. A GIF file is basically a series of still images that loop one after another. Because they are 8-bit graphics and they only support 256 colors, they tend to be of really low quality, so keep that in mind when using them in Doodly. It's best to consider them accents rather than the main attraction. So let's add an animated element to a scene in Doodly. You'll see here I have a scene of a police officer sitting in front of a desk and there's a clock over her shoulder. I want to convey a sense of time passing. But if we preview this scene, you'll see the only real animation is the hand drawing the elements. What I'd like is for the clock to actually move. So earlier I had created a clock GIF. So I'm going to import it just as I would any other graphic. So I'm going to browse for my files and upload my GIF. So I'm just going to place it in my scene and I'll delete my other one. And let's take a peek at it now. So once again, the hand draws it on and now it animates. So let's do another one because I want to show you some of the limitations to this. So I have a fish bowl over here and a fish and I've already added some bubbles. Okay. Let's hit preview so you can see what it looks like. So I have my drawing. I probably want to turn erase off and we've got these bubbles. So one of the first limitations is it looks dumb when you have it erasing before it comes on. So I want to turn the eraser off. So I go to settings, erase mode off, apply. Then this particular GIF that I have is of the bubbles and you'll see that it's a blank white rectangle. You don't see the bubbles. And that's because when I created this GIF, the bubbles start off screen and then they move up as you saw. So the first frame is empty. So that's why you don't see anything. So it can be a little difficult to work with if you have a GIF like that that starts blank because you can't see it for placing it. The other thing to keep in mind is that they could generally come across as not transparent. So it's a solid image, okay? GIF files generally don't support transparency like PNG files do. So if I placed it here, it's going to cover up the line of the water. So I have to be real careful where I place it. And likewise, it, I'm having it draw before the fish comes on because if I place the fish first and then have this scene come on top of it, it hides the fish. So I need it to come on first. And then you'll notice, let's hit preview again. See how it's scribbling that on first? I don't want that. That looks dumb as well. 
I had turned the eraser off, but then there's that scribble effect and it's basically scribbling nothing. So we don't want that. So we're going to hit this edit button and we are going to go to reveal mode and turn it to fade. And that way it's just going to fade on I'm going to save and return instead of scribble on. And I probably don't need it to do it for three seconds. I probably just like a one second fade is fine. So now let's take a look at it. And that's much better. Probably move the fish over a little so we cover that area where they appear. Let's try that now. And a lot of this is just going to be playing with it until you find something that you like. And I like that just fine. And now finally, you can convert an existing video into a GIF file. So if we go over to this scene here, you'll see I have a little doodly video inside the laptop. Let's take a peek at it. So, Look, I've got a little doodly video. It's doing its thing there. And that is just a GIF file. So here's how I did it. I made a short doodly video, converted it to a GIF file, uploaded the GIF file, and placed it inside this laptop. How? Well, there are a lot of services online that'll do it for you. If you search on Google, you'll find them. Simply upload your video file, click convert, and then download the GIF. These sites tend to have lots of ads and they might prompt you to download other programs, so be careful where you click. When using a conversion service, keep your video clips relatively short and then let them loop as your scene plays out. A higher frame rate will produce a smoother animation, but it does make the file larger. Perhaps most important of all is to play around with it and have fun with it. And that's the basics of adding animations to your doodly videos. Thanks for watching.